Hello, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over the three scenarios for a down round situation. So first, let's take a look at what's going on. Um, the, total com the total current number of shares issue is from table 11.3. So that was the last table when they have GPA after they get money from GBA. Uh, so that didn't change. It's still $100,000. The amount of money they need is also the same is two million dollars but now the new um, investor in this case this is pear tree partners they want they demand the 66.67 percent so in other words they want two-thirds of ownership for the two million dollars so let's take a look at what the new market value per share is based on this offer price so the first two again is the same as what we before we take the number of shares that we have times the number of percentage they want divided by one minus the percentage of shares that they need okay and then we take the amount of cash they need divided by the number of new shares to be issued so notice that the price is ten dollars let's compare that to table 11.3 in table 11.3 the price was fifteen dollars so because the price has gone down from $15 to $10, this is a down round. In this situation, we're going to look at the assumption that there is no anti-dilution provision. So remember, if there's no uh, anti-dilution provision for GBA, losses to GBA will be proportional to the losses suffered by the founders. So let's take a look at what will happen. The calculation is very similar to um, uh, an up rung or any any um, other rungs um, with no additional provision. So the number of shares is the same as from table 11.3. And the number of shares to pair tree is the 200,000 shares that they wanted. And now the important thing is what happened to percentage ownership, right? Because that is the key. The caps table, what we really need to focus on is percentage ownership. Notice that the percentage ownership for all the current shareholders decreased by a lot. Um, and the new shareholder and pair tree partners get their two thirds And when you add up the total, make sure that it still add up to one. So pair tree partner get the two thirds. So now let's take a look at the P, the pros and pre money valuation, and also take a look at their change in value. So this part you should find very familiar. This is exactly as what we had done in table 11.4 uh, in the last video. So the ground valuation is the amount of money that you raise divided by the ownership that you give away. And the P money valuation is the post money valuation minus the cash that you raise. So here is the same. We take the number of shares times the current market value minus the table 11.3. So make sure you go to the right table. Uh, and this is their old value. So they lost $5 per share. So $5 per share at 40,000 shares is $200,000. Uh, the same is true for Stephen. So we take our current number of shares times the current price minus in table 11.3, the old number of shares times the old price. And GPH is the same with 50,000 shares at $10 versus before they have 50,000 shares at $15. And to in total, the company's value decreased by $500,000. In this case, they all take losses, and the losses is proportionally uh, distributed. Next, we're going to take a look at um, the same scenario, except they have anti-dilution provision. Here we have, let's take a look at the situation. So we always start with computing the valuation as though there's no anti-dilution provision because we need that 
to determine whether or not it's an up round or a down round. So we always uh, take a look at this no, no matter what. So remember the post value valuation, we usually compute that at the end, but we can compute that earlier, is $2 million divided by the percentage that they want. So we know this is a down run, but we have anti-dilution provision and there's no minimum price. So the next thing we have to decide is what will be the value for the entrepreneur? And this is a very long equation. So again, I re refer you back to the textbook to really read through the steps and also to understand um, why the formulas are the way they are. So basically what we are saying here is that the equity for the founders or entrepreneurs is uh, based on the new valuation. And this is what the company is worth in total. Right, this is the post money valuation. The original founders in this case where they are anti-dilution provision and no minimum price, they are the residual owners. So they have to first make sure that the new investors get their $2 million in terms of ownership. They also need to make sure that because there is no minimum price, that the original investment from GBA will also be made whole. So basically GBA is saying, I want my $750,000 to be worth still $750,000. And whatever value remain, the residual value belongs to the entrepreneur. So the formula is actually very, relatively straightforward. We take the post money valuation, we subtract the cash infused by the new investor, and we subtract the, cat, the original investment by GBA. So what is left is $250,000. That is now the new equity stake. So now we want to compute the diluted market value per share. So this is your post. So this is how much the money is worth and all the, the entrepreneur's equity is worth. We divide that by the total number of shares owned by the two entrepreneurs. So if you go to table 11.3 and you look at Janet and Steven, together they own 50,000 shares. So in this scenario, what we're saying is that the 50,000 shares that is owned by Janet and Steven is worth only $250,000. So we take 250 divided by 50,000 shares owned by the entrepreneur. So now the diluted market share value is $5 per share. The reason why it's a lot less per share is because you can't give cash back to GBA. You don't have enough cash. What you can give to GBA to make them whole is to give them more shares. So now we determine who gets how many shares. So the number of new shares to be issued to Pear Tree, they give you 2 million shares and each share is worth $5. So we can divide that. So divide 2 million by $5. So you have to give GBA 400,000 shares in total in order for them to be able to own the, um, to have an ownership of two thirds. GBA, we're gonna first figure out what the total shares for them will be post round A. So post round A, they, they want the investment to be worth $750,000. And each share, based on our cal calculation, is worth $5. So GBA should have a total of 150,000 shares in order to maintain a proportional ownership that will give them their equity position of $750,000. Since they already have 50,000 shares, we have to give them an additional 100,000 shares. So the new shares is equal to the total shares post round A minus the existing shares owned by GBA. So that's given originally. Now, I encourage you to pause the video to really, really understand what is going on. So basically the key here is two things. You need $2 million 
an investor is willing to give you $2 million for two-third ownership. But you have an existing uh, investor, GBA, who demand to be uh, made whole, meaning they don't want to lose any of their investment because they have this anti-dilution provision. In order to do that, you don't have cash to pay them, so what you pay them is new shares. So in addition to issuing shares to the new investor, you also have to give some shares to GBA. So let's take a look at what the caps table will look like. Now the first three rows are the same because that is the existing. So this was, uh, so keep track of the date. So Janice started the business and so she was the one who had the original investment and then she brought on Stephen uh, in March and then they brought on GBA in June. So this was from table 11.3. When they go to seek this new round of financing, they have to give GBA more shares. So this is the number of new shares. So GBA, they need another 100,000 shares to GBA. And Pear Tree Partners, uh, they need to give them 400,000 shares. So we can add this up. That's our new total number of shares. Again, what's important is percentage ownership. So notice that the percentage ownerships change quite a bit. So Janice's percentage ownership went down to 6.67, and Stephen went down to 1.67. GBA, you have to add these two together, and that is close to um, 25%. Again, let's make sure that we did our calculation correctly. It total adds up to run. And of course, Pear Tree get the two thirds that they demand. Now let's take a look at our evaluation. Um, so we can compute this again, or we can uh, just use the one that we have. We know that post money valuation is $3 million and pre money valuation is post money valuation minus the cash raise is a million dollars. So now let's take a look at the change in value. For Janet and Steven, so Janet has 40,000 shares and now is worth $5 per share versus she had 40,000 shares that used to be worth $15 per share. So she lost $400,000 and in equity value. Stephen is 10,000 shares at $5 versus 10,000 shares at $15. So he lost 100,000. GBA, now we have to add this too because GBA now has 150,000 shares altogether. And that is worth $5 per share minus GBA used to have 50,000 shares at $15. Surprise, GBA did not lose any money. In fact, that's the whole point of an anti-dilution provision. If you add it up, the company lost $500,000. So now let's pause and take a look comparing table 11.6 6 to table 11.5. So notice here the value of the firm post money valuation is 3 million pre money valuation is a million janet lost 100,000 stephen lost 100,000 the total change in value is 500,000 in table and this is with the anti dilution provision in table 5 which we just computed we saw that this is the same the post the pre money valuation is a million dollar the company lost $500,000, but Janet lost 200, Stephen lost 500, and GBA lost 250. So that is proportional to their original ownership. But with the anti-dilution provision in table six, Janet and Stephen took all the losses and GBA did not.
So this could be one of the negotiation that um, Jenna and Stephen were willing to make to GBA originally to convince them to accept a smaller percentage ownership and say, we'll, we'll give you an anti-dilution provision. However, there may be situations that are beyond the founder's control. So the founder may want to put in uh, a minimum price along with the anti-dilution provision. So let's take a look at the last case. That will be table 11.7. So table 11.7 uh, uh, give us the situation where you have an anti-dilution provision, but it has a minimum price and the minimum price is $8. So all these are in the original contract. So again, we, um, we bring in the information from table 11.3, just so that it's easier for us to see. Um, same scenario, $2 million cash is what we need. Pair tree partners won 66.7, uh, two thirds of ownership. Now we have an anti-dilution provision along with a minim minimum price of $8. The step of calculation, again, we reference you to the textbook. So first, we're going to take a look at the post money valuation. Again, we're going to look at the regardless of the anti-dilution uh, provision. So the post money valuation is $3 million. So we want to see what is the maximum shares that we would give to GBA. We don't know if we will hit the minimum price. We're going to take a look at that first. So we take the original investment. So that's $750,000 divided by the minimum price. The minimum price is $8. So the maximum number of shares that GBA is entitled to is 93,750. Now we have some foresight here, right? We, we did this calculation. We knew that in order to make them whole, they need 150,000 shares. So they will trigger the minimum price in this case. Here, this is the, because of that, we know we will, you have to use the maximum price, uh, shares rather than the unrestricted number of shares. That actually affect the number of shares that you will give to the new investor, pair tree partners. Because remember, in um, startup financing is percentage ownership. So the number of shares that you distribute is, always, uh, is de uh, determined based on the percentage ownership that the newest investor demand. So the newest investor is the one who comes to the table with cash. And therefore, they are the one who get to call the shots. And the number of shares is determined based on their required proportional ownership. So the number of new shares given to the new investor is the existing shares by, this is a long, long formula, so again, reference you to the textbook, to the entrepreneur plus the maximum total shares to GBA. Notice this is similar to an up round when you take the existing shares times the new percentage that the uh, new investors want divided by one minus the percentage. So basically what we are determining here is the number of shares to make sure that pair tree partners will end up with two thirds of ownership. So we're gonna take the existing shares by the entrepreneur, so that will be Janet and Stephen of 50,000 shares plus the maximum shares owned by uh, that, that GBA is entitled to times the percentage. Oops, I forgot the multiplication sign. So it's good to see how you can recover from mistakes too. Divided by one minus the percentage ownership. So here's the number of percentage that uh, number of shares that pear tree will be entitled to. And now we can determine the new market value per share. So that's the number of the amount of cash needed. So that's the $2 million divided by the number of shares that uh, Pear Tree will have. So the new market value per share is $6.96. And the new shares issued to the GBA is equal to the maximum shares that they're entitled to minus the existing number of shares. So they are entitled to 43,750 more shares. 
Uh, here I need to uh, uh, take a pause. So when you are doing a down round, and if the if the company if the uh, contract has anti dilution provision with minimum price, you have to do three rounds of calculation. So first of all, you have to decide whether this is an up round or a down round. If this is an up round, no adjustment is necessary. If it's a down round, then the first thing you do is to compute the down round with an anti-dilution provision with no minimum price. So you go through this calculation until you hit here. If you determine that the diluted market value per share is $5, then you look at the minimum price. If the minimum price is higher than this, then the minimum price is triggered and you have to use this process. If when you go through the calculation here, let's say your minimum price is $2 and you figure out that the diluted market price is $5, then the minimum price is not triggered and you continue with this calculation. If the minimum price is triggered, then you switch to this calculation. And um, it's very important to know how to do this given how important uh, private equity and round financings are in today's financial world. All right, now let's move on to the caps table. This is actually the easy part. We've done it many times now. First, let's pick up the existing shares information from table three. Next, we look at the new shares. So we computed this already. The new shares to GBA is 43,750. The new shares to Pear Tree is 287,500. And you can always check to see if you did your calculation correctly. Because we know that the total has to add up to one and the percentage ownership to the new partner has to always be what they demand because they are the one who is bringing new cash to the table. So you see that the percentage ownership for Janet and Stephen did not go down as drastically as in the last case. Now let's take a look at the change in value. Uh, this two is um, the same as what we have done before, so you can compute that. So in fact, this um, is exactly the same, is how they were divided that is different. So Janet's change in value now is the 40,000 shares times the new market value, which is 696, minus in table three, she has 40,000 shares at $15 per share. So she lost some money, and so does Stephen. So his 10,000 shares is now worth 640, 696 versus $15. So that's a significant loss. GBH, again, we need to add up their number of shares. There is 50,000 plus 43,750. Oops. Okay. All right. And then we want to multiply that by the current price of 696. Minus in table three, they have 50,000 shares at $15 per share. So they also lost money. And if we add up the total loss, it is again $500,000. So now you have all three scenarios. So you look at table seven. The law, total loss is $500,000. But uh, Janet took the lion's share of the loss and Stephen followed by GBA. In the fully diluted case, it's also $500,000 total, but Janet and Stephen took all the losses. In the case that has no anti-dilution provision, total loss is $500,000. GBA was the largest shareholder, so they took the lion's share of the loss. So here are the three possible scenarios for a down round. And congratulations, this comes to the end of our book, and I wish you all the best.